Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorial. So in today's video what we're going to be going over is how to create a line trace with bullet drop. So this can be used to absolutely anything you want but where a lot of people will be using this is in a first person shooter game or any kind of shooter game where you want to be using line traces instead of projectiles but you still want them to be bullet drop, you still want to be affected by gravity. Today I will go over showing how to do that. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So normally when you are shooting a line trace it will just go in a straight line forward forever and ever or for as long as you want it to go but there will be no drop. So the way people use drop is projectiles but today if we were to press left click we can see that we have a line trace like this with bullet drop like so and this is obviously a very extreme bullet drop. I will also be showing today how we can make it so it can go a lot further as you would expect it to go a lot further than this with the bullet drop as well. So this is going to be what we're setting up today, a line trace system like this with bullet drop so you don't have to use a projectile, you can use line traces but still get that perfect gravity that you want to affect it like so. So this is what we're going to be going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So this is actually very easy to set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the blueprint in which we are doing our firing code. So for me, this is going to be in the content, first person, blueprints BP rifle as I'm using the first person shooter starter pack however wherever you're doing the code just do this in there so again for me it's BP rifle you can see we already have this default logic here for spawning in a projectile however we don't want to do a projectile we also want to do our line trace so I'm going to disconnect this but still use this spawn projectile custom event here so again just connect this wherever it is that you want to have this set up in but before we get to doing the code what we're going to do is go to the viewport and we want to create a reference for where we want this line trace to start from. So let's go right up into our gun, add a component, and we're going to just add simply a sphere. So just like this, and then it's obviously a bit big, so I'll scale that down to about 0.1, and just move this over to be right in front of the muzzle of the gun, like so. So where we want the bullet to leave, or the line trace to leave, is where we will put this sphere. What I'm also gonna do is set the collision of this to be no collision, and then also once it's in the position I want, I'll set it to be not visible. So basically the player cannot see this, nothing can collide with this, it's simply just a reference point so we know where we want the line trace to begin. Once we've done that, we can compile and go back to the event graph and now we will start doing the code. So what we do is we'll come out of our custom events or wherever it is that you're doing this code and we're going to predict projectile path and we want advanced. So this is basically a line trace with drop on it. As simple as that that's what we want so if we hover over you can see it will predict the arc of a virtual projectile affected by gravity with collision checks along the arc and returns true if it hits something so that is basically a line trace but more advanced so with the predict params here we're going to drag out of this make predict projectile paths params and now this looks more like your typical line trace here so we've got the start location as all as normal but we don't have the end location now, we just have the launch velocity. So this will go for as long as it takes until it actually hits something, whereas a line trace normally just goes however many units and forward you've said. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this sphere here, or I'm gonna rename it to firing ref like so, dragging this in and get it. And out of this, we're going to get world location. And we'll connect that straight into the start location here. So we want this projectile arc or this line trace to start where that firing reference is, as I was saying before when, when creating it. And then launch velocity, we just wanna go straight ahead. So what I'm gonna do is I will get right vector. Now, the reason why I'm getting the right vector is because the way this blueprint is set up, the rifle, it's not facing forward, it's facing to the right. So what I do for you is if you're not using this, I would get forward vector and see what that looks like because that will normally be perfect for you but if it's set up differently, you might need to get a different vector as I am here. Out of the return value of that, we're going to get a multiply and we'll right click on the bottom pin, convert pin and convert it to a float. We'll then right click on that float pin and promote it to a variable naming this speed. Now I forgot to delete that earlier, so I will just delete that one now and drag that in like so. Perfectly like this. And now you don't need to create the variable, you can just put it straight in there, but it just makes it a lot easier to change it on the go. So you can then compile and save that and set it to a default value. I'm gonna set mine to about 2000 for the purpose of showing it. However, yours will want to be higher than that, I imagine, and probably different for different weapons. 
but just change this value here to get it perfect for you. 2000 is what I was using at the beginning of the video and you saw that was quite a weak projectile. So again, obviously just change it for what is best for you. The return value out of this multiply is just gonna go into the launch velocity like so. And that is now gonna create our arc from our line trace. So then there's some other variables we wanna change as well. So let's open this up so you can get access to all of them here. Trace with collision, we're gonna to want to make sure that we do tick so that it is actually making sure it's seeing what it's colliding with as it is go along, as obviously that's the point of a bullet. We want it to hit something. And the projectile radius as well. So if you hover over it there, you can see the projectile radius is used when tracing for collision. In Or if it's zero, a line trace is used instead. So what I do here is if you have a specific bullet size you want, input that in there or just leave it as a line because you'll probably want a line anyway if you're going down the line trace path instead of a projectile. So I'm going to leave that at zero. The max sim time is, as I said earlier, this isn't going to go forward a certain amount of units. It will keep going forward until it reaches something or until the time is up. So if it, it will keep going until it's reached something or until a certain amount of time is over. I'm going to set this to 10 seconds. You can set this to whatever you want. But keep in mind that the longer it is going, the more data that is there, the more it's colliding with, the more it is having to basically compute. So the laggier it can be. And that is something you also have to keep in mind when using this. This will basically spawning in a lot of collision traces. So you want to make sure that you're not using this too much or you limit the amount it can be used or you try and optimize it as much as possible so it doesn't get too laggy. We can change the trace channel. For example, wild static, wild dynamic, all of this is the same as a normal line trace. So you just set this up how you would have wanted to set up your normal bullet as well anyway. So what does it need to collide with? What can it collide with? What does it have to ignore? So for example, what I'm gonna do for axis to ignore is make array and I'm just going to ignore self. So it's not going to be interacting with and colliding with the gun. So that one is going to be ignored. The sim frequency, this is another way where you can optimize it. So this is how many times will a collision sphere be spawned in essentially. So if you hover over it, it says determines the size of each substep in the simulation. So it's recommended between 10 and 30. So we can leave it at 20 like this. Now, if you want it to be more accurate, you'll obviously need to increase that. But again, just make sure that you are being careful with it. You can override the gravity if you want. I'm not gonna bother with that because the shooter I'm creating is on Earth. But you know, if you want it to be on the moon or on Mars or anywhere else, you can change the gravity there. Or if you just want to maybe not have to have it go, go, go so fast, but have less drop you can give it less gravity. I'm also gonna set the draw debug type to fudgeration just for the purpose of the video so you can see it in action. However, you probably won't want this in game. Draw debug time, I'll set to two so we can see it nicely. And trace complex, I'm not gonna do as I don't need complex collision. And that is all we need to do to set up the line trace with bullet drop or the predict projectile path advanced. Now, as with a normal line trace, we can come out with the result there or the predict result and break that and then we're going to come out of the hit result that is what you typically have from a line trace is the hit so we're going to come out and break that as well and now you can see this is what you would typically get from a line trace so this is what you do so for the hit actor the hit component anything that you want to be able to actually use this as a normal bullet and if we hold down b left click connect the branch into the predict projectile path and the condition into the return value this will only fire off true if it has hit something, false if it hasn't. So after this branch here, this is where you would do your code for the bullet actually hitting something. I'm not gonna go into that part today as I'm not going into all of the bullet stuff and everything. I'm just doing a line trace with bullet drop. And we have now done that, as you can see perfectly here. So if I compile, save and hit play, we can test this out and see what it looks like. So I pick up my gun and I left click, you can see we have this like so. So we've got this bullet drop here, with the line trace going far as it can until it collides with something or it'd go for 10 seconds, which obviously isn't gonna go anywhere because my map is too small for that to happen. And you can see the spheres are further apart than they were in the intro to the video. Because in the intro to the video, what I did was I had the sim frequency at 250, which is way too high for what you would probably want. So if we do that again, you would see that is now a lot more precise and a lot more accurate. So it's going to really collide with a lot more things. However, that obviously means it is doing a lot more collisions per frame, which can be quite laggy. So if I spam this, you can see I've now got loads in, it's lagging quite a bit. That's purely 
because I've just put way too many on here. So if we put this at 30, for example, that's on the higher end of the recommended spectrum. We can then click on this and you can see that's still not that bad, you know, that's still a good amount of collisions. And if I do a lot, there's no lag whatsoever. If I put stat FPS like so, you can see that my frames is dropping down to about 40. So again, still not amazing, but that's because I'm spamming it. I imagine you wouldn't let the player spam it normally. But with that, I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. What we've done is we've set it up so we can shoot a gun with a line trace instead of a physical projectile, yet still have the bullet drop. And let me also show you, we can change how far it can go. If I increase the speed from 2000 to 3500, for example, we'll notice this will now go a lot further. As you can see, perfectly there. We have that nice bullet drop, that nice arc, and it's very easy to customize and set up, as you can see, perfectly like this. And again, changing the collision and all of that great stuff. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you do, please do make sure to like and subscribe to the channel down below as it really does help me and the channel a lot. We're trying to hit 100,000 this year, so hopefully that's possible. So again, please do subscribe if you enjoy the content. And thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.